Hello everyone, it's Dr. Russell. This is a review video to get everyone ready for the um, uh, entrance exam for dual enrollment music theory. And there are many parts to this, and I'm hoping that these videos will be available to you forever. The first part is just to be able to look at a given note and tell us what the pitch level is and also where it is on the keyboard. Let's start with what you probably already know. What you probably already know, even from elementary school, uh, are going to be the letters and spaces of the treble clef and bass clef. You probably remember that in the treble clef, the spaces are F, A, C, E, and that the lines are E, G, B, D, F, for every good boy does fine. Okay? And on the bass clef, this might be a little bit, uh, you know, lost in some of your memory, that the spaces are A, C, E, G, for all, all cows eat grass, and the lines are G, B, D, F, A, for good boys do fine always. Now, I encourage you to Google, um, you know, staff paper print, and uh, you should be able to find lots of PDFs of staff paper for you to print out. And I encourage you to start a series of notes for you that you can go back and refer to. And you're going to want to remember these things and basically have these sentences, all cows eat grass, good boys do fine always, every good boy does fine, and face memorized. Uh, so that you can just look at a treble or a bass clef and be able to uh, immediately identify, um, you know, what is on there. Um, so I'll wait a second. I'll, I'll put this back on here. So in case you want to read it, um, if you need to pause this video, print that out and write this in so that you can always go back and refer to it. Pause it now. All right. I hope that you've already paused and you've written that down. And so let's continue here. So those are the things that you already know. Uh, a big common mistake, this is not going well, a big common mistake that I see among students is that um, they remember those sentences, but then they forget kind of like why those sentences work. The reason that F, A, C, E works is because this clef here, the treble clef, started as a G. And then ultimately came a little bit more prettier. Um, maybe it looks something like this. And then finally you can see, oh, whoops. Finally you can see that it evolved into the treble clef that we have today. Sorry, this pin has a little button on the side that interrupts my, there you go. It interrupt, uh, that, uh, that evolved to the treble clef that we know today. But it's, its evolution from G still exists. That second line is always the letter G. From there, you can count upwards and downwards and find the other letters. G down to F, G up to A, A, B, C, D, E. That's why face just makes sense is because it's following the musical alphabet based on that second line there being G. The bass clef started out as an F, such that that fourth line is always an F. It might have turned a little bit prettier to that. It ended up finally just becoming two dots. And then finally, something like that, until we have the bass clef that we have today. But still, that fourth line is F, which is why all cows eat. That E is one underneath F. Grass, that G is one above G. The letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G are based around the fact that this bass clef is also known as the F clef. So don't forget that so that if you get into the test and you're forgetting all cows eat grass and good boys and all that stuff, you can always remember that in the treble clef, that note is G, and in the bass clef, that note is F. And from there, you can count upwards and downwards to find any other notes. That would be F, E, D, C, B. All right. So there is, uh, you know, your introduction to what you probably already knew. What you might not know yet are these things here that are called C clefs. And C clefs actually look like, that's not a good looking one, C clefs look like an uppercase B. Um, and normally you're going to see one where the middle line goes between the two orbs, or you might see one 
where this fourth line goes between the two orbs. On a sea cliff, whatever line goes between those two orbs is going to be C. That is C. That is C. So on an alto clef, which is the one that's uh, the lower version, you would start here at the C and count downwards. C, B, A, G. C, D, E, F. On the tenor clef, C, B, A, G, F, E, C, D. Okay, and so that's your real quick introduction to these clefs, which you will see a whole lot in music uh, theory um, because you see them a lot in orchestral scores. The alto clef is played ex um, exclusively by the, or the, the viola plays exclusively the alto clef with occasional uh, drips into the uh, treble clef. Um, the things that play in the uh, tenor clef are going to be cello, sometimes trombone, sometimes bassoon. Cello, trombone, and bassoon can also play in the alto clef quite regularly. Um, so those two clefs do make their way in there. Ledger lines are temporary ways of um, extending, let's go back over here, of extending the clef, or extending the staff, rather. So if I'm in tenor clef, I'm sorry, treble clef, these lines would extend up past, every good boy does fine, this F. But it doesn't continue the sentence. That's a common mistake. You don't do every good boy does fine, every good boy. Once you get to ledger lines, only the alphabet is there to help you. F, G, A, B, C, D, E. If I were going down, you start with the lowest line, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, okay? And uh, let's do some on the bass clef. Try to figure out what that note is on the bass clef. Push pause if you need to. And here's your answer. G, let's count down, F would be the space, E would be the line, D for the space, C for the line, B for the space, A for the line, and G. Okay. You see here you would start on the top line, which is good boys do fine always, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. It works the same on tenor clef and alto clef. We'll just do one on alto clef here. C, B, sorry, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? Uh, ledger lines extend the staff, but once you get to the ledger lines, you can only use the alphabet, all right? Uh, again, I feel like most of you probably already knew all of that material. The next part is something that's unique to music theory, and that's putting in numbers along with the letters. And in order to do that, you have to understand a keyboard. On the entrance exam, you'll see something very similar to this. A full 88 key keyboard up here, and then lots of pitches down here. And you have to be able to tell the, the test proctors which pitch it's talking about. It's not enough to know that that's a G. You have to know where on this keyboard that particular G lies. You probably already know that there's only seven letters in the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and there's a lot of A's on here and a lot of B's and C's, etc. cetera. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the keyboard, let's first learn my favorite secret. You'll get to where you just are able to do this quickly um, and just look at a keyboard and get it. But if you're new to the keyboard or if it's been a while, you'll see that the black notes are grouped in twos and threes. The group of two, I call the doghouse. Inside the doghouse, this white note is a D. Inside the doghouse is a D. From there, you can count up every letter and find all the other pitches there. If I were to ask you what this note is, D, E, F, G. If I were to ask you what this note is, D, C, B, A. There's your A. If I were to ask you what this note is, D, 
E, F, G, A. It is either A sharp or B flat. Okay. Now, when you zoom out and look at the entire keyboard, let's count. Let's start with C's and count. It's taking me a second here. Hold on. Count how many C's we see on this keyboard. Give me a moment to erase my stuff. Let's count how many C's are on there. There's your doghouse. There's one C. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight C's on this keyboard. Middle C is the one known as C4. Commit that to memory. Okay. Now, I'm sure you've heard of middle C before. And as you can see, it's the fourth out of eight. That makes sense. Um, how can you translate which G this is to find out if it's this G or this G or this G or this G, etc.? In order to do that, you have to know where the C, middle C is on the treble clef. Commit this to memory. Middle C on the treble clef is one ledger line below. So if that C belongs there, this G would be up. C, D, E, F, G. C, D, E, F, G. That means that that G belongs to that pitch on the that key on the keyboard right there. It now then this next step, it's not enough to just call this a G. You have to call this G4 so that the test proctors know that you know it's not just a G, but exactly where on the keyboard this lies. OK, and the rule is anything between this C and that C is going to be a four. This would be D, E, F sharp, F sharp or G flat four. This would be D four. This would be B, because there's one down from C, three, because it's between this one and this one. All these notes are three. All these notes are two. All these notes are one. These three notes down here are actually zero. All of these are seven, and this is the only one that is eight right there. So knowing all of that, if I were to ask you to write in the, stop it, the letter name and number for this pitch. First, let's figure out the letter. Every good boy does fine. F, G, A, B, C, D. We know it's a D. Figuring out what D it is is now going to have to be figuring out where C4 is and counting up. We know that C4 is right there. That is going to be C5. That is C6. Therefore, that is going to be D6. I hope that made sense. If not, go back and rewind and do it again. Let's figure out what that one is. Do the letter first. E for every. D would be the space. C would be the line. B flat. Goodness gracious, that's annoying. B flat. Now what is the number? Well, we know that that note on that space is C4. That's right underneath it, so it would be B flat three. Let's say that on the test this was number seven and this was number eight. You would then want to go up here and put seven. And you would want to go here and put eight. So that we would see that you know which number goes with which pitch in the correct place on the keyboard. All right. Let's do some more here. Treble clef. The letter F A C E. E flat. C4 is there. 
C5 is there. Therefore, this is right above it. This is going to be E flat 5. If this were 9, you would go up here to E flat and say that that's number 9. Okay, whoops. Can you do that one? And that one. Push pause, please, and I'll give you the answer in a moment. Push pause and figure out the letter name and the number for each of these. We'll call this one number 10 and that one number 11, and then label them up here as well. Push pause now. Okay, here is your answer. This one would be G sharp 3, and this one would be B flat 5. If I were to label these, G sharp uh, 3 would be right there. B flat 5 would be right there. Okay. On the bass clef, middle C is above. Oh, by the way, on the exam, you don't have these numbers. Okay. Um, on the bass clef, middle C is one ledger line above the staff. So that one is C4. There's your C3. There's your C2. If I were to ask you for this, that would be A natural 2. It's down from 3. If I were to ask you for this, it would be F sharp. There's your C3. F sharp 3. If I were to ask you for this, that would be A. Let's see here. 1. Way down there, because there's C3, there's C2. You go down two more, that would be A1. If I were to ask you for this right here, you know that C4 is right there. C, D, E, F, G. That would be G4. Let's say that this is problem number one, and this is problem number two. Give me the letter name and number, and then label them up here on the keyboard. Push pause on your video now. Okay, I hope you pushed pause because here comes your answer. The answer to this one would be D flat three. I'm sorry, D flat two. <laughs> and this would be E flat four. D flat two would be right there as number one. E flat four would be right there. There's your answer to number two. Okay. The alto clefts are actually easier to deal with because that, remember how I said the line that goes in between the two orbs is always C, even easier. The line that goes between the two orbs is always C4, middle C. Sorry, there we go. So on the alto clef, the third line is middle C. On the tenor clef, the fourth line is middle C. So if I were to ask you for this one right here, C, D, E, it's right above C4, so it would be C, E4. If I were to ask you for this one, C, B, A, G, F, E, that would be E3 down there. If I were to give you this, that's on the line, then let's count up, sorry, your C is right there, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C5, D, E, F5, and that would end up being right there. On this one, if I were to ask for this, C, B, C is in the fourth line, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, and because we went down below um, uh, C3, 
this is going to be a2, which would end up being right there. OK, I hope that this review kind of gives you everything that you need to know for um, being able to find different pitches on um, uh, the alto clef, tenor clef, treble clef, and bass clef. I hope you understand the different numbers and how to find them. Remember that C4 is middle C. Remember that on the treble clef, C4 is right here. On the bass clef, C4 is right here. On the alto clef, C4 is right here. And on the tenor clef, C4 is right there. Okay, if you can remember that, then everything else is a matter of counting up and down. The danger is going to be forgetting that you skipped over a C or something and making sure that you get the right number. So just be careful about that and you should be good to go. All right, this is your first review class and I'll put more up as we move ahead. Uh, if you need to go back and review anything, do as many times as you need to uh, by re reviewing this video. Bye.